Hi, and welcome to the vlog. Uh, we're Rod and Sue, and you've joined us for part two of a six weeks trip we did to Corsica and back in May 2024. A quick recap on the journey so far. We travelled from the West Country to Portsmouth, where we caught the ferry over to Wistam, and then on to St. Suzanne, Tours, and Neris le Bain. Milo, Anguilem, Mez, Sauzet le Pain, Casis, and then too long to catch the ferry to Corsica, which is where we are now. Panorama bar at the moment, having a, a bit of a tip of my cap. We were quickly off the ferry, out of the port and heading south on the T11 and then the T20 and we were heading for a town called Court. Feet up on the dash and the calling open road Road trip classics on the radio In your hand tied in mind There's no such thing we did check the camera footage and we did actually pass two police people, so perhaps we were lucky to get away with it. Ooh, no... Camping you see new. This campsite is probably best described as being rustic or basic. It's run by Madame Orsini, a very nice lady who sells her own honey. It was Sue's favourite campsite in Corsica and it's just a very short walk into court. This guy is Pascal de Poli. He was head of an elected government in 1755, but at the time the island belonged to the Genoese. And seeing trouble ahead, they sold the island to the French, who invaded in 1768 and it became a French province in 1789. After the defeat by the French, Pascal moved to London, where he was great friends with King George III. The Citadel houses the Museum of Court, and this gives you access to some fabulous views across the town and the mountains in all directions. Next it was lunch, a couple of glasses of very nice local white wine each, and a goat's cheese salad for me and a bruschetta for Sue came to 36 euros. That's what happens when a Hover X1 gets stuck in the tree. The following day we left court and we headed for Ajaxio, Corsica's capital city. It's a lovely bit of scenery. Windows down, scattered clouds, smell the there were a lot of pull-ins, so you could stop and admire the scenery. This was a nice campsite, dated but spotlessly clean facilities, good sized pitches, but a pizza and snack bar available during the high season. The next day we walked into Ajaccio, and that was because I messed up the bus timetables. The campsite to the Citadel is about a three mile walk. The Citadel was a little bit disappointing. You get free access to the courtyard, but there's not much there. You do get a view from the top of the wall. 
Next was the Cathedral Santa Maria Assunta, where Napoleon Bonaparte was baptised. And just round the corner is where Napoleon lived, and the property belonged to the Bonaparte family until 1924. Next it was the harbour, a massive market. And then lunch. What's it called? The Carpaccio. Very nice. The following day was spent on the beach opposite the campsite. And after lunch we wandered down to Pinky Beach, a really friendly bar about half a mile down the road. After three nights here, it was time to move on, and we were heading for a place called Propriano. This was another really nice site. The toilets and showers were air conditioned, fabulous pool and a really nice looking restaurant which unfortunately was only open during the high season. That's the nearest beach to the campsite, it's about 700 metres. A walking into Propriano is probably about a mile. It's sandy beaches all the way. And when you get into Propriano, there's loads of restaurants, loads of bars. And from here, uh, the Corsica Ferris goes north to Marseille in France and south to Porto Torres, Sardinia. So what are we doing today? Getting some food. There's a casino supermarket just at the road, so we're going to call into there. And then we're going on to Sartén, and then we're going to another place, Bonifacio, Bonifacio, down on the south coast. Indoors down, scattered clouds, smell of spring. Sartén is an attractive medieval town with many of the buildings dating back to the 16th century made out of granite. We're not at all sure if we came into Sartén in the right way. It was a little bit tight on the high street in places. There's a happier looking Sioux. Now we find a parking space. We had a look around the very attractive town, it was well worth a visit, and then we decided to push on to Bonifacio. We like this campsite, uh, toilet and showers were spotless. I did park a little bit too close to that tree. But the best part about the site is it's just a 300 meter walk to this view. These yachts are here taking part in the four day Nations League Bonifacio Challenge for Swan Class 50s and 36s. 22 yachts from 19 countries. The yachts at this end of the marina seem to be charter yachts. This boat here is the Preference 19. 
It has room for 10 guests in five cabins and it'll set you back €113,000 per week plus expenses. I've got to say it looks impressive out there, doesn't it? I'm looking forward to seeing that tomorrow. The citadel was first constructed in the 9th century. It's been added to and altered many times over the centuries. And the town itself is a maze of narrow streets and alleys lined with shops, bars and restaurants. There are also the stairs of the King of Aragon. Legend has it that it was built on his orders in one night to help in the invasion of Corsica in 1420. And who doesn't like a good legend? There are also a couple of dilapidated Genoese towers that you can view. And also the seaward fortifications that are now being restored. Next we headed for the harbour to find a bar. Oh, is it washing the boat? We've just come from Bonifacio. Uh, we're headed for Port Vecchio. Uh, we should be there in about half an hour. Windows down, scattered clouds, smell of spring from sight. This was a wooded campsite. You could park where you like, there were no marked out pictures but you did have to be mindful of where you parked if you wanted electricity or have a very long lead. And these trees were apparently cork trees. The rest are Turkish pines. Really smart toilet block. Big showers and toilets. And, uh, and that's the pool. We walked into Porto Vecchio, the marina is nice, uh, the actual walk was a little bit further than we had anticipated, and from there it's an uphill walk to the old town. An impressive church, uh, the Church of St John the Baptist, and Port Vecchio Museum. You do have to pay to get in, I think it was about 3 euros. But that does give you access to the roof terrace, and there are fabulous views of the harbour from there. Our next campsite is going to be an active site, Camping Calamar. This was another really nice campsite. Excellent toilets and showers, direct access onto the beach, and the campsite had its own beach bar and restaurant. A bit of a lazy day next day. We wandered along the beach to have a look at the marina at the end. And lunch in the beach bar and restaurant. Wasn't Sue's favourite pizza of all time? It was a white cheese base with pine nuts and honey. And with a couple of drinks came to a total of 33 euros 10. Just one more night before we catch the ferry back to France. Uh, but today we're going uh, to a campsite just outside of Bastia. This was a nice sight, and they let us stay till gone 5 pm the following day while we waited for the ferry. Hiya, we've had a lovely day. It's a super campsite. Right on the beach. Right on the beach, looking at the sea. Hot showers and a restaurant. Absolutely. Our last day in Corsica. 
We walked into Bastia about a mile and a half. Bastia came into being in 1383 when it changed its name from Marina de Cardo. It went from being a small fishing village to become the capital of Corsica. It is still the second biggest city after Ajaccio and is the busiest French port on the Mediterranean. The old port is well worth having a wander around. And just off of the old port is the Église de Saint Jean de Baptiste, the largest church in Bastia, built between 1636 and 1666. Nice enough. This is the Cathedral of Bastia, it was started in 1495 with major reconstruction in the 17th century. And this is the old governor's house, which is now a museum, but unfortunately we just didn't have enough time to visit. Lunch was at the campsite restaurant, now this was a proper restaurant, most of the people there were outsiders, but a shared pizza with drinks came to a total of 38 euros. This tunnel's about half a mile long and it goes right underneath the old town, underneath the old harbour and comes out again at the new port. Well we've made it to the port, we've checked in and we're just sat in a queue now. It's, uh, it's a couple of hours before we sail. Sue's in the back. She's uh, a bit hot even though I've got a shower but I'm still hot. Get yourself a drink. Cheaper in here than it is on board. Yes. <laughs> it's nearly in. How the fair is nearly in. Mega Smeralda. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up. That would be much appreciated. Thank you. And please join us for the next episode as we spend two weeks travelling from Toulon in Provence back up to Wisterham in Normandy. Goodbye Corsica. Was it worth it? Oh yes. Yeah.